Agents Podcast. You guys all know me, and you know that I constantly talk about video, 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 and then, of course, tying it into social media. And I think you're probably tired of me talking about video because you know you need to do it, right? You know you need it in your brand. You know that the future of our world and marketing and branding will require you to get in front of the camera. So I figured, why not bring on another guest who is going to just back what I say, teaches it a whole different way, and is going to help you with camera presence and what she calls charisma hacking. I am really excited because I can never personally stop learning myself to bring on our guest today, McCall Jones. Welcome. I'm excited to chat with you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited about this. <laughs> this is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. So obviously, you know, we just met. Uh, so literally yeah. just met. So <laughs> I'm going to assume my audience, probably not everybody knows who you are. So please introduce yourself and tell us uh, a little bit about who you are, what, you know, where you started and what led you to where you are today. Absolutely. So friends, my name is McCall Jones. I'm so excited to be here. Uh, so like Jeff said, I own a company called Charisma Hacking. And with Charisma Hacking, we have a scientific way, and I'll get into that, but to be more likable and more persuasive on video. We make sure that people pay attention to you, trust you, and do what you say. And we actually have ways to measure that. So I have a system called Charisma Styles, where we have figured out that there are 54 different forms of charisma or styles of charisma that somebody can be. And you sabotaging yourself on video has to do with you choosing or you trying to be a different one of the 54 types. So we'll get into that in just a second. But uh, the way that I got into this is I grew up as a performer. Um, you know, I have 20 years of performance experience, started my professional singing career when I was eight years old. Uh, I've literally performed on stages for uh, over a million people and then on camera with movies and things for tens of millions of people. And, um, you know, when I was eight, I went from doing talent shows to doing crowds of 35,000 people in the course of a couple months. And that really increased the stakes, as you can imagine. Uh, and it made me really stressed out. And I had a dad, I still have him, but <laughs> I had a dad who um, wouldn't speak to me for days at a time if I messed up on stage. Mm. So it made me start to black out on stage and, um, you know, not faint or anything, but I couldn't remember what happened when I got off stage. And, you know, at some point when um, I would get off stage and I would know that I messed up and my dad wouldn't speak to me, then, you know, I always thought, okay, that's how I'm losing my it factor. Cause everybody always told me, you know, McCall, you have the it factor. I'd be like, okay, what does that mean? And they're like, well, you can't teach it. You're either born with it or you're not go get them. And at first it made me feel really special. But like I said, when I started blacking out on stage, I was like, okay, well, when I mess up, that means my it factor goes away. And this is what, you know, I thought made people love me or made people want me around. And then when I would get off stage and I didn't think that I messed up and the same reaction would happen, all of a sudden I started to panic. Like, I don't know what goes into this it factor. And I don't know if your people have ever heard that term, but it's, it really is. They're like, oh, you have something special that nobody else has that's indefinable. And it started to give me a lot of anxiety. And I knew that this it factor thing was something that, was basically all of my worth as an eight-year-old child. You know, I thought this is all my worth. And if I don't figure out how to have this consistently, then nobody's going to love me. And I'm going to stop doing this thing that I love. And um, so I started to just look at the people who I was on the program with. I was the go-to singer on the motivational speaking circuit growing up. So like I would do galas with people who were way better than me, you know, Donny Osmond and Michael Bolton and Shadezy and Diamond Rio and all these incredible uh, artists. And I would look at them and I would say, okay, what makes people clap? And that started this journey of figuring out how to bottle that it factor and finding out what exactly made people pay attention to people. And then, you know, as I moved to video, what made people engage with them or trust them or confide in them and what moved people to action. So that's what started this. And like I said, this, this art of charisma hacking that I do um, now, you know, when I was building this charisma style system, I charisma hacked, which just means I looked at what gives people the ability to make people pay attention to them, make people trust them and make people act. And I charisma hacked a thousand people and I interviewed a hundred or 500 people on clubhouse. And I interviewed a hundred people within this very niche community. And, um, I figured out that 
there are only 54 ways to do it. There's actually only three ways to move somebody to action. There's only three ways to get somebody to trust you. And there's six ways to get somebody to pay attention to you. And now I teach people how to bottle their own it factor. And I teach everybody that everybody is, is charismatic, but it's, it's, if you're trying to be somebody else or trying to compensate for things that people have said that you lose your audience. And, you know, if it feels awkward, then it looks awkward and your audience knows that it off, that it's off, but we have a really, really systematic way to make it not. Does that answer your question? Yes. Yes, it does. And actually you led right into my next question, which was just the charismatic, just that word in general. Right. And, and, you know, I do this a lot, lots of webinars, podcasting videos, thousands of videos. And I get that too. Like, Hey, it's, you're charismatic. I don't know if they use that word, something like that. And I'm like, actually not really. I'm mm. just, I've just practiced a lot. I've done it a lot. It's become, a, it's become my brand. Mm. And you know, it's, it's just who I am. So my question to you is clearly like from the second you jumped onto zoom, it was just <laughs> like, hey, hey, and I mean, that's like, you're just, I, I gotta believe you can't be on 24. Like your husband's gotta be like, McCall, settle down, go, <laughs> go sit in the corner. I mean, t is that really your personality all the time? Or is it part of your business? Or let's talk about that because I think that's where a lot of people will struggle. I love that you asked that question. Yeah, this is me all the time. So we just feel really bad for my husband. Um, obviously there's, so I call it linear energy. So within each charisma style, and I'd love to dive into what, you, what each of those are. Uh, you know, like you said, you can't be on all the time. And I just call that intensity level, right? There's different emotions and different intensity levels that every single person has, right? But each one of those emotions and intensity levels remains within a specific charisma style, right? So when I'm sad, I'm actually still a version of this. And when I am happy, obviously I'm this version, right? And when I am a uh, lower intensity level, right? I'm a little bit sick right now. So my intensity level is actually kind of lower than it usually is. Uh, it's still, it's still me. And what people think is that, you know, when you have to be on the way that they define being on is to become a different version of themselves. And I just don't believe in that at all because uh, what I tell people, so the definition of charisma that we use as charisma hackers is literally the ability to get people to pay attention to you the ability to get people to trust you and the ability to get people to do what you say or act. Mm -hmm. And every single human in their lives actually already has that. We call it the fan score, right? So in business, we can look at a follower count or customer numbers and the value of each customer. But in real life, your fan score, I ask everybody like, if you're married or you've ever been on a date or you have a best friend, you have a fan score of at least one. Right. And you have used the skills to get somebody to pay attention to you, trust you and do what you say for your entire life. And yet when you get on video, like you said, like you try to be on or you try to be something else when, I mean, if you're married, you got your spouse's attention in a very specific way, right? You use that skill and it worked. So why would you try to develop a different skill? to be on video, right? It's like, why, when I got my husband's attention like this, like we said, it's his own dang fault. He knew what he was getting into, but why all of a sudden would I go on video and try to be somebody completely different when I have been honing those skills since I was born of getting people to pay attention to be in, in my actual personality, right? The cool thing is, I mean, if your listeners are listening to the way that I talk versus the way that you talk, Jeff, they're completely different, right? What I say with charisma styles is there are no good or bad charisma styles. There's only a right and a wrong for every single person, right? And if we really dive into that, it's like, okay, if I tried to be you, it would be wrong for me. And if you tried to be me, it would be wrong for you, but mine isn't bad or good. And yours isn't bad or good. They're just right or wrong for every single person. So if your, if your customers have ever had like a sales script or a script that didn't work for them, they were not the same authority style as the person that gave it to him. It doesn't mean that person was a scammer, right? Cause the, the script worked for them and it probably works for other people in their program, but they don't know specifically why it worked. So they give them tactics and they say, okay, use this. And the person goes and tries it. And they're like, ah, but why, when I say it, is it aggressive or why, when I say it, does it make me sound awkward? But it doesn't when they're saying it and they're saying the exact same words, right? There's no good and bad, only right and wrong for every single human. 
right? So if I were trying to be on and I became somebody else, even, you know, if I tried to become you, if I tried to become, you know, <laughs> Russell Brunson or Krista Mayshore or, or whatever, you know, Gary V, if I tried to be Brene Brown, right? You would sense that it would be very, very awkward, right? You would know that something is off. I just give people the language to say, here's exactly what is off and here's how to change it. Yeah. Do you think that it's this particular topic that is holding most people back? Because, you know, the thing is, is, and I think a lot of people think it's quit equipment or it's, you know, it's, it's that technical ability to be able to edit when I go in and push start and yeah. edit when I push stop and, and be eloquent and not, and eliminate ums and, you know, do jump cuts and things like that. Do you actually yep. think that this is what's holding most people back? I, I will be so bold to say that I know it is <laughs> right. The fear of rejection is such a powerful thing that I think this is what keeps people from succeeding in a couple ways. The first one is it paralyzes them from acting right? And they just don't do it and they won't start. And the second piece is uh, the tools that are currently available to people. Um, and as far as like getting better at charisma is what people call find your voice, right? And find your voice, the concept or the process of find your voice is to publish over and over and over and over and over and over again. Now, what happens is, right, like I said, we have very specific ways that people sabotage themselves. Uh, we call them false faces. So the first one's called a two-face. It's T-O-O. -O. It's the one that you compensate for, right? Everybody in their lives have been told they're too much something or not enough something. When you try to compensate for this, remember, there's a right and a wrong style for every single person. You are only effective if you are in your charisma style. So when people venture out of that, right, they are ineffective, but... When people try to find their voice, if they start out of their charisma style and they just repeat and repeat and repeat, all of a sudden, the thing that they measure as success is comfortability, right? It's the lack of discomfort or saying, I'm not scared on video, McCall. I've done this a lot, right? And then they start to use other metrics instead of saying, wait, wait, wait. It's like you walked into a smelly room and five minutes later, all of a sudden you're like, this room smells great. The smell didn't go away. You just got used to it, right? So people get comfortable and they measure, they measure the success on video like that. And then they start to measure in numbers of numbers of video published instead of what each individual video does for their business, right? They measure in comfort instead of effectiveness. So when people first are paralyzed to get on video, yes, this is why it's the fear of rejection. And then once they are on video, I believe it is the single thing that keeps them from success because comfort is something that they're saying, oh, well, I, I bet I'm pretty good on video because I'm not scared of it anymore. When then we look at it and we're like, okay, well, do you have drop-off rates? What's your watch time look like? Do you have engagement rates, right? Is your market research actually on because people trust you or is your compassion style wrong? And if people make it to the end of your videos and they're not converting, it's probably not because the color of your button. It's probably because of your authority style, right? They make it to the end and they don't buy because of this specific thing. So I, I mean, <laughs> I'm going to say over and over again, like, Charisma hacking, charisma styles is the thing that when people are doing video is actually keeping them from success in a lot of ways. So, you know, you just mentioned, you know, and you mentioned this a couple of times now, which it, it, it almost sounds to me, this is the way I'm kind of articulating what you're saying is it's about buying a product per se. And I know that's not exactly what you're saying, because I know you work with real estate agents, but at the same token, as I'm hearing you say that, I'm hearing you say, uh, watch times, for example, which by the way, is insanely difficult to get people to watch anything nowadays because it's just too much. It's diluted. And, and actually there's still not enough. And so it's funny that we say that. Cause I know you would agree with me on that, totally. uh, but, but at the same token. So first of all, you don't, don't get caught up in virality. You, you basically said that don't get caught up in how many views your videos get, hmm. but you are saying get caught up in how long they watch, which I can attest to is very hard. I produce a lot of videos and I even know that. And I know my messages are good, but it just means that a lot of the audience just isn't that interested in it. Hmm. But let me digress and move to the end where you said, make the sale, right? Somebody's not buying something from you, but, at the, but, at, but the, the reality is, and, and our audience is real estate agents. And we all know that you don't wake up every morning, just the average human and be like, I'm going to buy a house today. Right. <laughs> totally. You know, and I'm going to get on Amazon. Right. It's, and so a lot of the, the strategy with our social brands and our marketing and our video is to just stay top of mind. So that way in two, three, four, seven years, 
they think of me. And so maybe help articulate that because, and, and the reason I'm asking that is because I don't want anybody to think, oh crap, like I suck at this. I'm just going to quit. Right. Yeah. yeah. So what do you think about that? Just that kind of the way I'm thinking, I'm just I assuming someone it. else is thinking it. Totally. So, uh, with what we measure as far as conversion rate, it's just action, right? Authority means action. So if you ask them to do something at the end of the video that they do it, right. It's when you tell your friends to take your advice and they do it, you're not asking them to buy something most of the time. Right. But if they do it, that means your authority style is great, right? The way that you teach your kids or tell your kids to clean the house, that is actually your authority style, right? You are getting them to act. You ask them to act and they do it right. So as a real estate agent with staying top of mind at the end of each of your videos, you are asking them to do something, right? Whether it's watch another video or uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel or anything, right? That action that you ask them to perform, that's what we measure as far as conversion rate. So a lot of times, so right now um, I'm working with a whole bunch of real estate agents that, you know, are doing outreach to people, right? And if they're doing outreach to people and they want them to respond like a listing video presentation, if you send a listing video to somebody, it's not telling them, you know, do I measure the success from the end of this video, whether or not they sell or buy their house from me? We're not there yet because that's not the specific action that you ask them to do. You ask them to call you back. Right. And it's like, if they call you back, then we know that your authority style was correct. If they don't call you back, or even like if they sent you an email back, right, whatever that may be, that conversion rate that we talked about, like you said, it's not always selling something. It's the ability to move people to action, right? So that action with staying top of mind, if they're never clicking on your ad or they're never clicking on your video or they're never clicking on whatever, even at the beginning of the video, when you're like, stay to the end and all whatever. If you have like a monthly date night and you're like, Hey, come to this date night because this is what we're putting on. Right. If you have like a pet of the month, right. Where you're like, Hey, make sure to check out the next pet of the month. Right. Whatever that action is that you're asking them to do. That's how we measure that. And staying top of mind is a lot of little tiny actions, right? It's like, Oh, look out for this or Hey, go to this dentist that I'm recommending or whatever that may be. Does that kind of answer your question? Totally. And I, and that's why I asked it because I think I want to shift the way people People think because we're so we're so kind of jaded because mm -hmm. of what we see that you know our metrics are off and and so staying in that same vein I'd like to ask you like when we talk about that taking action and and understand because this is also a problem in my opinion in the real estate world just in general like people get into things strategies, no matter what it is, it's not just video and social and they vacate it way too early. It's a long game, right? Everybody wants just immediate gratification. And if that existed consistently, we'd all be there and we wouldn't do anything else. It just doesn't exist, right? The closest thing to instant gratification is leads, but most people vacate that because it sucks because you get one out of a hundred because the, you know, the conversion is very difficult. So uh, you know, what, what I'd like to, to have you expand upon is that taking action that it doesn't mean shoot video, get by your seller, bada bing, you, you've made a commission. It don't work that way. So what, what is probably, would you consider the most important action that we want our audiences to take when we're in the, in the business of building a brand and, you know, creating omnipresence? I would say it's come back. <laughs> I would say it's watch another video, right? Repeat viewers are huge. If you, you know, it increases your touches with them on the internet. It increases, uh, like you said, like that top of mindness, uh, it's check out another video, right? Make sure you're here tomorrow. If you're going live every day, it's, Hey guys, drop a comment of who's going to come up. Who's going to come tomorrow, right? It's increasing that repeat viewer. Cause if you can increase that repeat viewer already, not only are you having them follow an action, right? With that authority style, but you are giving them and you yourself the opportunity to start to build trust, right? It's really hard to build trust in one touch, right? We have ways that we can do that, but the longer you have them in your your universe, right? The more videos they watch, the more likely they are to develop kind of that parasocial relationship, which is just meaning that they, they know you, they feel like they know you yeah. right when you've never met them before. Yeah. So every action at the end of a video, really the first thing that you're trying to do is just get repeat viewers. So ask them specifically to come back. And when they come back, 
tell them to tell you, right? It's like, oh, hey, like if this is the first time you've seen my video, this is obviously with live streaming or uh, on YouTube, right? If you can say, drop a comment if this is the first video of mine that you're seeing. And if you're a repeat viewer, drop a comment because I'd love to say hi to you, right? Anything like that, call out your repeat viewers, right? Give rewards, even just in the in the realm of like, hey, I'm gonna shout out your name for people who are coming back over and over and over again, right? It's trying to acquire repeat viewers. If you can get repeat viewers, you actually are going to be able to do a lot more things, right? Then when you ask them to buy a house or sell their house or do any of those bigger actions, they're already used to taking action in the way that you've asked them to do. Yeah. They feel like they know you. I love it. Um, and that was, I, I, you, you answered the question exactly how I would answer it. So like, you're like my long lost sister, I think. <laughs> I love it. Um, but it's good. It's good. Cause you, I, I fed it to you and I put the ball on the tee and you, you whacked it out of the park. I love um, it. so let's get deeper into, because I think we've established, and I think if you, you're listening and you understand the, the conceptually, what we're talking about here, yeah. it is that parasocial relationship. It's how I felt about Maverick and goose uh, yeah. <laughs> back in my childhood. You know, we, totally. we were best buddies. Right. Yep. And I'm excited about the new one. Finally coming out by the way if you're a top gun fan you'll know what i mean um so let's talk about this charisma and and how to build I, we call it you know more camera presence but it is it's incredibly important yeah. and you know displaying the energy or or the you know the eloquence and all of these sort of things you got 54 styles you've got different categories for different things we only have so much time, but let's try to give them as much as we possibly can. Ha <laughs> ha, my favorite subject. Okay, so uh, we have three different things that we have to have in order to <laughs> be our full selves, right? We've done a ton of research on this. So the first thing uh, that we measure is called the fan score, right? This is just how good you are at these things. The reason why this is separate is because people of all different charisma styles can be good and bad, right? Remember, we said there's no good and bad, only right and wrong for every person. So this is gonna spell face. So F is your fan score. A is your authority style. This is how you move people to action. C or F, A, yep, C is your compassion style. This is how you get people to trust you. And E is entertainment style. This is how you get people to pay attention to you. So we have three different ways that we can move people to action. One so, of so them. Let me stop you right there. Go, go do that. Do that again. I, and I maybe I didn't hear you right. But when you're when you're are you saying an acronym? Yes, F A C E. F-A-C-E. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so give me those F-A-C just one more time. Cause if I yeah, missed it, somebody else probably missed it. Yeah. So F is your fan score, right? Yep. This is how good you are at doing these other things, right? How good you are at it. And okay. then A-C-E is your specific charisma style. So A is authority style. So this is how you get somebody to act, how you move somebody yep. to action. C is your compassion style. This is how you get somebody to trust you. And E is your entertainment style. This is how you get somebody to pay attention to you. Got it. So within each of these styles, there is a right and a wrong for every single human. So there's 12 styles total, but you will be one authority style, one compassion style, and one entertainment style. This is how you are in real life, right? And I'll talk about how it's sabotaging you uh, in just a minute. So within authority, there are three ways to move people to action. One of these is right for you. The others are wrong. This is how you actually use it. So first we have light, light people say, trust the process. So if you imagine that there are three vehicles going to a location and they're all going to get there at the same time, however, they all get there a different way. Light authority says, trust the process. They say, this bus is going to this location. All I have to do is convince you to get on this bus, right? It's trust the process, trust my system, trust the path right? That's light authority. They say, trust the process. Second, we have lift authority. They say, trust yourself, trust yourself. They say, I think my client should be in the driver's seat. I think I should be in the passenger seat, giving them directions because when we arrive at the destination, I think it would be more beneficial for my client to have taken all of those turns. So we have light, trust the process, throw the bus. We have lift, which is trust yourself. They say, my client should be in the driver's seat. And finally we have lead. They say, trust me. I should be in the driver's seat because what if a pedestrian runs out to the middle of the road, right? I should be the one leading the way. Now, remember one of these is right for the others are wrong. So as I was going through these, 
one of these stood out more to your mind and you immediately thought, oh, that's the good one. That's the one I wish I was, but you're using one of these. Like I said, the others are sabotaging you and we'll get into that. So next we have compassion styles. This is how you get somebody to trust you. The other way that we can say trust is they confide in you. They confess their pain to you, right? So within compassion styles, first we have steady. So steady people don't change their emotional cadence or state based on the person that's across from them. If somebody comes to a steady and they're like, oh my gosh, this is what happened. A steady's like, okay, talk to me about how that feels. They dive deep into the emotions. Now, how you would do this asynchronously, that just means one-sided, right? If you're on a video and somebody's not across from you, you deeply describe the emotions that somebody feels. You say, wow, it sounds like you're feeling really overwhelmed. And wow, the headache of buying a house is just, it's so stressful, right? So that's steady. Second, we have fix. So fix people do not dive into the emotions. They dive into the context, right? So Jeff, I would say that you're a fix because it's not about the emotions. It's about the context. You don't say, wow, it sounds like you're feeling really overwhelmed. You say, of course you feel overwhelmed. This happened, this happened, this happened. You give it context right? I would also say you're a lead, by the way, just going off of this. So you say, trust me, right? With fix, you say, this is the context. So the way that you would talk to your wife, right? If she comes to you and she's like, oh my gosh, I'm feeling so overwhelmed. If you were to try to be a steady and say, oh, I'm so sorry. It would actually feel really condescending. But if you validate her feelings by being like, honey, of course you feel overwhelmed, right? Your crazy sister called you today, right? The dishes aren't done. And that's something that's really important to you, right? The kids have been on your lap or around your leg all day long. Of course you feel overwhelmed. You haven't even, you have not dove into the emotions at all. And yet she feels validated, right? So that's fix. Finally, we have mirror. Mirror people match the emotional cadence and intensity of whoever's across from them. Hmm. They're all about the reactions. I am a mirror, right? So if your audience watches back this interview, every time you say something, I react to it, right? So if somebody comes to a mirror and they're like, oh my gosh, this is what's happening. A mirror's like, no, tell me more. That's crazy, right? So we have steady, we have fixed, and we have mirror. Remembering that one of these is right for you, the others are wrong. Because Jeff, if you tried to be me as a mirror, people would think that you were making fun of them. If all of a sudden you tried to react to things, they'd be like, okay, you're totally mocking me, right? And if I tried to do what you do, right? If I tried to fix, people would think that I was unfeeling. If I tried to lower my reactions, be like, okay, well, tell me what happened, right? It's wrong for me. And the other one would be wrong for you. So now we have authority, we have compassion. And finally, we're getting into entertainment. But first I have a question. Yes. About the whole mirror, two two questions. Mirror, so I I, I challenge, like easy for you to mirror someone with high emotion. Is it easy for you to mirror someone with no emotion? Yeah. So mirrors have really specific skills. So what you will find is within each of these styles, there's actually a specific skill set that can't be faked, right? So we've been on for, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes, right? And I can already read you. I know exactly what your styles are because I mean, one, this is what I do all day long, but they're actually really obvious, right? So each skill set is within a certain person for you to mirror somebody who has no emotions or try to, right? Mirroring is known as like the skill of like, you're supposed to copy their body language or whatever. I actually don't do that. It's about the reaction. And it's about making sure that they know that I am along the ride with them, right? It's that I'm actually on their team, right? So if somebody's like, oh my gosh, like, I feel so overwhelmed. I'm like, oh my, yeah, of course you do, right? It's, I actually don't change, right? Mirror is not about me becoming a different person in front of every person. It's about me being able to uh, react to what they're saying so that they feel like I'm on their same team. That's the skill set of a mirror that is steady. Once again, right? I have this thing called the false face consequence key. When we get off here, I will show it to you. I actually know the specific consequence if you pull to a style that is not your own with every single one of these styles. So as a lead, right? As a lead authority, I'm a lift. So you'll hear the whole time I'm like, oh man, the magic is inside of you, right? It, this is innate, like all of these things. You wouldn't say that. And if you did, you would feel like you were abandoning your people because you're like, no, trust me, trust me. Like I know, I know the path, right? This is my experience. And for me, I'm like, okay, if it works for this person, it'll definitely work for you, 
right? The language is completely different. Even if we were to use the same framework, if I were to pull to light and say, trust the process, once again, people would feel like I was abandoning them, right? For you, it would make you look very weak. It would make you look very insecure. Same way that you say like, okay, well, mirroring, that doesn't make sense if they have no emotions, right? Of course it doesn't for a fix, right? For a fix, if somebody has no emotions, you actually would react the same way. You would say, well, tell me what happened. Tell me what happened, right? Describe the events that led to you feeling the way that you are feeling, yeah. right? For a steady, it would be different, right? So there are those very specific consequences of getting out of your styles. Does that make sense so far? Yeah, yeah totally. Yep. Cool. So finally, we have entertainment styles. So with entertainment styles, there are six different entertainment styles. Three of them are outwardly focused and less intense. Three of them are person focused and more intense. So first we have amaze. Amaze people are all about, this is so fascinating. They, I call them magical humans, right? This is like um, Ant-Man or Paul Rudd, right? Or Jenna Rink from 13 going on 30. Everything is magical and they're, they're pointing out the fascination of the things in front of them, right? So this is a maze. Now they get to decide what is exciting. They decide what is exciting. And whenever they think is exciting, everybody else is like, oh yeah, that's really exciting. Now, if you take an amaze and you shift the focus from the external to the person and you intensify it, you get excited. All of a sudden, this is like Chris Pratt, right? It's like, oh my gosh, what's up, everybody? This is Chris Pratt, right? If your audience is familiar with Russell Brunson, this is also Russell Brunson, right? He says, oh my gosh, I'm so excited to be here, right? This is person focused because whatever the person feels, you will also feel as far as an excite, right? They say, I am exciting, right? Well, an amaze decides what's exciting. The person focused one says, I am exciting, right? So that's excite. Now we move to is, charm. Is, is, are we in the outward bucket here? Are we in the what? You said there, you said it was outward and then person. Oh, right. So right. it goes every other one. So amaze is okay. outwardly focused, okay. Got it. right? And then uh, excite is person focused. Okay. Right? And we'll do that again. So we do that three times. So the next Got one it. is charm. <laughs> so charm is all about the back and forth, right? They say, okay, I'm going to shine the spotlight over here. And then I'm going to bring it back to me. This is like Ryan Reynolds or like Tony Stark. Or like, okay, I'm going to tease this person. Then I'm going to bring the spotlight back to myself. And then I'm going to tease this person. Then I'm going to bring the, the spotlight back to myself. There's always a back and a forth with a charm, right? They're like, okay, let's come over here. Let's bring it back here. Let's come over here. Let's bring it back over here, right? So they are outwardly focused, but they decide where the spotlight goes. Then if you take a charm and you shift the focus from the external to the person and you intensify it, you get perform. I am a perform. They say, I belong in the spotlight. The way they bring attention to things is they are theatrical about it, right? They're like, okay, this is what we're going to pay attention to right now, right? It's very clear that I am a perform. Yes. Next, yeah, of course. So next we have impress. So impress people are all about the importance and significance, right? The importance and significance of what is happening. This is like Idris Elba right? He says, okay, this is what I want you to focus on. And if you focus on this thing, then obviously you will focus on that thing, right? You'll bring attention to it because this is important and this is significant. Now, once again, if you take it from the external and shift it to the person and you intensify it, you get roar. Roar people say, I am important and therefore you should listen to me, right? They say, listen, I think this thing is important. And everybody goes, that thing is important, right? So within all of these things, right? You are either an outwardly focused one or you are person focused. When you need to get somebody's attention, and this is important because you talked about being on, it's when you need to actually get somebody's attention, right? Then you say, do I amaze, excite, charm, perform, impress, or roar? It's not your default state of when you're sitting on the couch and you're like, what do you want for dinner? I don't know. What do you want for dinner? Right? You, you still have linear energy, right? You're still going to be like a lower version of whatever your charisma style is. But when you need to get somebody's attention, right? When I need to get my husband's attention, I am more perform than when I don't need to get his attention. And I need to get his attention several times throughout the day, right? When we're being silly with each other or whatever, it's not just like, hey, pay attention to me. But anytime I want the conversation to shift my direction, I will click in to more perform, right? Everybody does that throughout the day. So it's not necessarily feeling like you have to be on. It's saying, oh, I actually, I actually do that several times throughout the day, right? When you meet a stranger or when you go to a different table at a networking event, right? You're not going to introduce yourself of like, hi, I'm a call. I'm really excited to be here, right? You shift into that higher intensity version of your entertainment style. Does that make sense? It does. So which one am I on the last one? You know, I've been trying to read that for a minute. I think you're either a charm or a roar. So I think, uh, 
I don't know. I'd have to watch your video. So with each individual person, it usually takes me about 30 minutes, right? So going back and forth, I would say you're either a charm or you are a roar. I'd love to watch more of your videos and see, but those are the two that we're going between, right? Charm uh, has a very specific skill set. I'm hearing that with you more and more. Where like uh, the interesting thing is when people try to be a charm, they are they they well they can't do it, and they're seen as like mean or like they're missing jokes because they don't have the back and forth that a charm has, right? And when people try to be a roar, uh, they appear really aggressive because they're like, I need this kind of intensity, right? When people try to be a perform, they look like they're doing a parody and they, they look like they're making fun of people, right? So each one of them has a very specific skill set. So I'm still learning about your skill set, but, uh, yeah, I would I say that it. you're one of those. I love it. I love it. I was just, I was just curious. I was curious since, mm -hmm. since you labeled me before, I know. this is almost, I know. this almost reminds me in, in the real estate world, you know, we always think about it's the personality traits, it's disc, right. Yeah. Or it's, it's something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, this kind of goes along that vein, just kind of broadened and more, more niche down to yeah. video, which is pretty cool. I honestly, I mean, like I said, we can talk more about it. I would say right now, my guess is that you're a charm just based on the way that, well, I mean, and this is the way that you interview as well. It's like, uh, you will throw the spotlight my way and then you'll be like, whoa, 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 whoa. And then you'll bring it back to yourself and then you'll throw the spotlight my way. And then you'll be like, whoa, 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 whoa. Right. With, uh, with a roar, it's just a different, it's just a different animal. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would say, I'm going to say charm with the caveat that I'm going to keep watching your stuff, but okay. Yeah, That's what good. I'd say. Hey, yeah. challenge granted. I mean, you just go, you don't have to look far to find videos. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. good luck. Um, awesome. Awesome. So, okay. So where do we take it from here? Like that was, that was intense. Now where do that we was go? intense. <laughs> Absolutely. So within each of these things, like I said, so if you get out of your charisma style, so I gave you 12, right? When we say there's 54 different charisma styles, it means you're a combination, right? You're either a lead fixed charm or you're a lead mirror perform or whatever. There's 54 different combinations. So as you look at these things, like I said, one of them is right. The others are sabotaging you. You start to look at your real life of the tools and skills that you're using, right? So every time you meet somebody and you sense that something is off, they are out of their charisma style. You just haven't had the language to say that, right? You're like, oh, they're being really awkward. Or like, oh, they're being really aggressive or, oh, they're being whatever. If somebody likes you in real life, they should like you on video. video. And if they don't like you in real life, they shouldn't like you on video right? It's saying, what are the skills you're actually using? How do you parent your kids, right? When you ask somebody to clean the kitchen, do you make a list and say, Hey, here are all the things that we need to get done. Which one do you want to do? Do you say, okay, I'm going to delegate this. And like, here's the system, right? Here's the order that we go into it. I don't care when it gets done, but here's, here's what we need to do. Or do you say, Billy, you do that. You do that. You do that. Right. Here's what needs to happen. Right. You have a different skill set right? Do you say, trust the process? Do you say, trust yourself? Or do you say, trust me, right? Last time you needed somebody to trust you, did you steady? Did you mirror or did you fix, right? And if you tried to do one of these things and it didn't work, it means that is not your skill set, right? Same thing with entertainment. So start to think about, right? You can listen to this podcast episode over and over and over again and start to think about the skills that you're already using, right? We are going to give you the advantage as if Every single person you wanted to sell something to had a deep relationship with you. We're just able to do that from your first video because of your charisma styles, right? Every person that I ask, I'm like, would you have an advantage if you could create a relationship with every single person before you ever sold them anything or asked them to do anything? Would you have an advantage? And they say, yes, 100% of the time, right? The way that we have to do that is say, okay, well, how are you doing this in your everyday life? I also can give your people like a little free thing. There's no opt-ins, there's no anything on it, but it's what we use for events. It's charisma.style. So I have to tell you, <laughs> it won't be perfect because people see themselves in different ways, right? So I'm gonna tell you really fast, like very quickly about these things called false faces. So first we have the two face. I said this before, this is the one that you compensate for, right? So you think somebody's told you you're too much something, not enough something else right? This two face is sabotaging you because you can only be effective in your own charisma style. However, when you start to compensate, you start to pull out of your charisma style to say, well, I, people, my whole life told me I'm too bubbly, too silly, makes me look stupid. So I'm a perform, but I pull to impress. Now people who are impressed are fantastic, right? No good and bad, only right and wrong, but a perform trying to be impressed looks awkward 100% of the time. So you have this two face, you say, okay, 
When am I trying to compensate? The next one is the ooh face. This is the one that you wish you were. Remember, I've said so many times, there's no good and bad, only right and wrong. However, when I was going through this, you included, right? Every single person that I talked to this about, they decide what's the good one. They say, oh, that's the good one. That's the one I want to be. Or they have mentors they are trying to model and they say, well, that, right, McCall, she's good on video. So I should be just like McCall, yeah. right? It's sabotaging you because you're pulling out of your own charisma styles. The only way to ever match the fan score or to be as good as Jeff is to not use his charisma styles. It's to use your own, right? Finally, we have the ew face. And this is just the one that you think is the bad one. Right. If you're like, oh, all of performs are so obnoxious because you had a bad experience with one. If you're then a perform, you are trying to actively pull away from what you are because of your experience with somebody else. Right. So I say that because this charisma styles estimator will allow you to start to get close. And there's a training on every single style when you drag your little face to uh, whatever you think you are. However, we have about a 5% rate of people who guess all three right because not because you don't understand, right? And not because you're stupid because we have a lot of really, really incredibly smart people, but because of how you see yourself. Right? You will think, oh, I am definitely right. I, in my brain, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm an impress. I know that's not true. Right. But if I were to do the entire interview like this and not be silly at all, you'd be like, okay, this, this jig is really weird. Right. But because I have the weird kooky energy, right. You're like, oh, okay, that's probably natural for McCall, even though it's weird. Right. How you see yourself is going to sabotage yourself. So you can take this estimator and you can get an estimate of what these charisma styles are, right? And if you're like, oh man, that's not what I thought, send it to your spouse. Like I said, this is what we use for events. So there's no opt-ins. I'm not going to get any of the information on the back end. You can take it as many times as you want and you just drag that thing around and you can say, okay, well, what about this? And you can get trained on each of those individual charisma styles. What if I want to opt in, McCall? Come on. Oh, well then go to charismahacking.com. Of course. Yes. You send me a message and you say charisma style me fool. And I say, okay. <laughs> there was my charm right there. I love it. Yep. <laughs> yep. There's a charm. I love it. I love it. All right. So let's, let's wrap up with, I, cause that, that's a lot of stuff. And actually so you mentioned that I've been thinking throughout this, like I'm going to have to go back and listen to this again, totally. just because I take this very seriously. And, and, I, I try to convey that to people like you need to take this seriously. It's like, it's like shooting video. And I always tell people, I'm like, I, if I had a nickel for every time I hear somebody say that I shot the video, I didn't even watch it. I just posted it because if I watch it, I'm never going to post it. I'm like, no, 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 no. You've <laughs> got to watch yourself. It's the only way you study. It's the only way you learn. It's the only way you get better. And, and this is the same concept. Like when you listen to these things and as I'm the interviewer, I have a two full job to take notes as, as somebody who wants to learn, but also, you know, keep up with you. And that's a challenging <laughs> thing because you that talk fast. I'm so I sorry. <laughs> I love, no, I love it. Actually, I, I've totally met my match. I feel like you make me seem very calm, uh, which is cool. Cause I get the, <laughs> I'm, I'm always the high energy guy. Hmm. And, um, so you like, make me feel like you're, you're, you're the hare and I'm the tortoise. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> I win the race, just so you know. Um, it's true. I lose it. Thank you. I love it. See, I love there's it. your charm. <laughs> Going back and forth. It's I'm good. more confident it's, every second. There's your charm. I love it's it. Good. So let's let's end with this. Uh, obviously, and I, and I'll go back to to where they can the charisma style, charismahacking.com, that kind of stuff, because I want to I want to make sure people can connect with you. But yeah, of course, if 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 I'm that agent, that realtor, like the millions that are out there, right? There's like 2% that are actually doing it at a consistent high level. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, uh, I mean, gosh, yeah. Okay. Another interview that told me what I needed to do. Like totally. McCall, you totally got me jumping out of my seat. <laughs> Where do I start? What should I do first? Yeah. So the first thing you need to do is you need to be aware. You got to be aware of what the skills you are using in your everyday life right? The, it's, it's realizing that people already like you, people already trust you and people already do what you say and you actively trying to change those things, right? A lot of times people are like, oh man, I need the newest sales script. I need the newest this, right? Those things are important because they're giving you frameworks. They're giving you elements. However, you're always going to have to adjust them to make sure they fit how you do these things in your everyday life. 
right? So it's being really aware. It's saying, okay, next time you need somebody to confide in you, how do you do that? Right. I've now given you the language to know how you do that. And it's saying, okay, now I need to take those skills that I've already been using my whole life and move them into my business. So if you are just hyper, hyper aware, the first question that I ask every single person when I get on a Christmas styles analysis call is what do you think you are? Because being able to accurately articulate how you see yourself helps us see those false faces, right? Because everybody has them. Once you are aware of what you use in your everyday life, you're also aware of who or what is keeping you from being yourself all the time, right? It's saying, oh, but I have this mentor or, but I'm too introverted to, or, right, I'm too big or people think I'm too much or not enough, or I'm, I'm this, I'm that, right? When the reality is people in your life actually don't think that, right? So your customers won't think that if you are yourself. Like I said, there, there are going to be people who don't like you in your real life. That's just how humans work. But if they do like you in real life, which is a massive amount of people, they should like you on video. If they don't, it just means that you are doing these things wrong. But the beautiful thing about that is there's actually a right way to do it. We can fix that. So be hyper, hyper, hyper aware. And then, hey, join all my programs and then we can fix it. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Uh, and I think, you know, the one the in summary, the, what, what I would take from this is that I think most of you and I'm talking to the audience, you have it wrong. You, you're, you, and, and, and I don't take that the wrong way, but we just automatically think you, like you, you don't stop and, and, and become self-aware and realize that that actually is where this whole thing starts. And I'm going to raise my hand and say, I've never really done that. Now, over the years, maybe I have, but I didn't start that way. I started because I felt like it was a necessity. I mm. got to get on camera because I want to create differentiation. And then it just started to work and it started to spiral and I ran with it. But I was doing it in 2015, 16, when mm. I was the unicorn, right? Now it's a lot more prevalent. So I love this. I, I think it's really important. Uh, it's like, it's like defining your brand. You know, we work with another company yeah. that does branding and it's like, you don't think about that. And I don't know why, where the context comes from what we're trained, what are, you know, how we're wired, but um, I think this is awesome. So obviously the charisma dot style, I've already got it pulled up. I was actually perusing uh, the various uh, famous it. people. Um, in your faces, yeah. yeah, exactly. I, I'm yeah. definitely going to, I'm definitely going to play around with this. Uh, uh, I love it. If they want to, so that's charisma dot style, and you mm -hmm. just go have some fun. And then charisma hacking, charisma hacking.com. If they want to connect with you, so that's your website. Yeah. But what if somebody just website. says, I just want to send you a message to say, or you're be a amazing. friend. Yes. yes. Uh, hey, connect with me on Instagram, okay. McCall Jones official. Connect with me on Instagram. I love writing back to people. We can be friends. I'm so excited. I love it. I love it. The other thing, too, if I can say one more thing, please. The interesting thing is, uh, you know, I tell my people, if it feels awkward, it looks awkward. And that's a really interesting take from a video coach, but that actually should give you great relief because if it looks awkward, it feels awkward, which means when you're getting on camera and you're waving your arms around, you probably don't do that in your real life. That's why it feels awkward. There's nothing about a camera that makes you feel awkward. It's what you are doing on the camera that makes you feel awkward. Right. I just spoke to a woman. She has like a, she has a community of like 40,000 people. She's incredible. Her name's Lauren. And she's like, well, it's different because I'm not speaking to somebody. And I'm like, okay, well, speaking into the void is triggering you, right? The emotional thing that you're going through is triggering a physical response. The emotion always tr triggers a physical response. You're doing weird things with your facial expressions. That's why it looks weird. It's not because you're not speaking to somebody, even though that emotion that's important, we need to know it is triggering that physical response, right? We can identify those things. If it looks off, it feels off, right? And if it feels off, it looks off and your audience knows that. Like I said, you guys actually know this too. I just have the language for it, right? Every time you meet somebody and you're like, oh, that felt off, they were crazy, right? Or they felt really awkward, right? Know that as soon as you can feel, it's actually better if you're still feeling awkward on video because you have walked into the smelly room and it still smells. You can still fix that, right? With my clients who are comfortable and not working, we have to bring back that awkward feeling and say, okay, well, 
What is different about you? I call it finding the gap. What's different about you on video and you in real life? That should feel awkward. And then they're like, oh yeah, that does feel awkward, right? Take great relief from the fact that like, if it feels off, there's a specific way to fix it, right? You are not, <laughs> you are not flying blind out there, right? So, let, so let me, let me, I want to stop you right there because I feel like this is a whole nother conversation that we could potentially have. Mm-hmm. Um, and because I think, I feel, I think the whole feeling awkward thing is, is facts. And, and actually I want to add to that, but we don't have time. So why don't we do another episode? Let's do it. Awesome. So if you like that, we're going to bring McCall back. We're going to talk more about that. We're going to obviously do a little bit of review of what we just talked about, but we're going to talk about the whole awkward feeling awkward because there's a couple different components of that, that I would like to talk to you about. And I'd like to pick your brain on. Uh, So you're going to have to come back for the next episode. (laughs) I love it. I love it. Thank you, McCall. We'll we'll talk. We'll talk very soon. Yes. Very soon. Welcome agents podcast.